How do you avoid overheating? How do you get better dynamic range? How do you get better image quality? Here are 9 tips for the Insta360 X3, One X2, One R, and One RS. Excellent dynamic range. I'm talking about a secret mode on your One RS and One X2 that you might not know about. It's called Indie Exposure. Here's how it works. Sometimes we need to shoot in an area that has parts that are brightly lit like this and those that are shadow like that. Let's see what Indie Exposure does. If you look at the sun, you'll see that Indie Exposure has much higher highlight range. Now what about shadow range? Shadow range is also better with Indie Exposure. You can see more shadow details. So as you can see, Indie Exposure can significantly increase the dynamic range. Now let's learn how to use it. Step 1. Put your camera on a tripod. If possible, put it at the edge of the sunlit area and the shadow area. Step 2. Position one lens toward the brightest area while the other lens is facing the darkest area. Step 3. Turn on in the exposure and swipe left and then on the bottom, swipe to the left until you reach in the exposure. Then turn it on and press the X button and start shooting. With the regular video, the camera tries to balance the shadow and the highlights in 360 degrees. With in the exposure, the exposure for each lens is set independently. The lens facing the sun will have a darker exposure. In Insta360 Studio, click on the stitching options. Turn on dynamic stitching and chromatic calibration. This will let Insta360 Studio blend the exposure of the two lenses smoothly. The end result looks seamless. Now after shooting that scene, be sure to turn off the in the exposure mode or else your video is going to look weird like this. What's the best kind of tripod for your Insta360 camera? So you know that the One RS is a little bit heavier than the One X2 and other 360 cameras, especially the one inch 360. So let me show you the tripod that I use. So I use a monopod with tripod legs. The tripod legs act as a counterweight. So it helps relieve the stress on my wrist when I'm using a heavier 360 camera. But the most significant benefit of this kind of tripod is that it lets me get a greater variety of shots by shooting the same scene in different ways. So here I set the tripod down to shoot from a fixed vantage point. Then I reshoot the same scene, this time carrying the tripod for a closer view. During editing, I can blend the two shots seamlessly. It looks more dynamic than shooting from the same perspective all the time. For more tips like this, hit like and subscribe. How to avoid overheating. So here are three tips to avoid overheating. Number one, if possible, use the 6K 2004 FPS mode. When I use the 6K 30 FPS mode, the maximum recording time I get is around 20 minutes. Whereas with the 6K 24 FPS, I can record for one hour without overheating. Second, you'll want to use a faster microSD card. Slower microSD cards will cause your core mod to heat up faster. The one that I like to use is the SanDisk Extreme Pro. But you can also use SanDisk Extreme Ultra, I think. It's the red and gold one. Third, you should also use your One RS to format your microSD card. That's because your One RS will add a file there that will somehow magically make it record faster. Now, if your One RS is still overheating, here's the ultimate solution. Use what I call the Mad Max mod. Just attach a heat sink to the side of your One RS with thermal tape. See links in the description. One of my favorite features of Insta360 cameras is the GPS overlay on Insta360 stats. Step 1. Connect your camera to the Insta360 app and press the camera button. Step 2. Tap on the three dots in the upper right corner and turn on GPS. Start recording.
when you view the video on the Insta360 app, you should see an option to add Insta360 stats. All right, so how do you get great video quality? So here are three tips for getting better video quality. Number one, change the default sharpness. The default sharpness is on very high. You need to change it to either low or medium. Second, in the profile, you need to change it from the default vivid to standard. Or if you prefer to grade your video yourself, you can change it to log mode. Third, pay attention to the lighting. Try to have the sun at around 45 degrees to your subject. What about backlit shots? You can kind of sometimes experiment with shots like this, where I'm just at the edge of the shadow and the, sun, the sunlight. So take a look at the shadow there. As long as my profile is in the shadow, then there's going to be this cool like rim light effect. So you could experiment with that too. Now, if you're vlogging, you could use the same settings, but the difference is that you have to pay more attention to the audio quality. Audiences will forgive bad video, like shaky video or videos that's too dark or too bright, but they won't forgive bad audio. Here's what it sounds like when I'm using the One R S on the selfie stick and using the in-camera microphone. Here's what it sounds like when I'm using the Rode Wireless Go 2 and the One RS on the selfie stick. So what about photos? Now, there are three photo modes. One is INSP, the second is INSP plus RAW, and the third is pure shot mode. Number one is INSP, that's basically unstitched JPEG. In terms of the image quality, that's gonna be the lowest of these three. The second one is INSP plus RAW, which means that in addition to the INSP file, you're gonna get a RAW file. RAW file means the photo is completely unprocessed or as processed as little as possible. And that's a good thing because that means it's gonna retain as much of the original information as possible, which gives you more flexibility to adjust your color temperature or let's say your exposure. Now the third mode is called Pure Shot. Pure Shot is basically just raw mode, but in addition, a, uh, Insta360 uses its AI algorithm to edit your photo automatically. Now when I'm shooting, I found that when I shoot in pure shot mode, it takes a longer time to save the file. So usually I use INSP plus RAW. And that's be okay because when you're in Insta360 Studio, if you load your shot in RAW mode, it's still gonna apply pure shot anyway. Now here's a tip that can make reframing easier. Know which side of your camera is the front. Every 360 camera has a front lens. For some, it's on the side with the LCD screen, while for others, it's the opposite side. To find out, turn on your camera and look at the live view. The lens that's facing the view on the screen is the front lens. The LCD screen is facing this way, so that means this is the front lens. So when I start recording, then whatever it's pointing at, in this case, the, that pond or lake, that's gonna be that's gonna be the, the first thing that the viewer will see. Now, if I stop recording, and then I turn this around, face the other way. Now, whatever is on this side, that's gonna be the first thing that the viewer will see. Tip number nine, save time and avoid reframing by simulating me mode. Just shoot a 360 video and load it in Insta360 Studio. Select Deep Track. Draw a rectangle around your subject, click on center the target, then start tracking. The result will be similar to me mode. Bonus tip, adjust the FOV by clicking on this yellow bar, then adjust the distortion control and the FOV. Bonus tip two, if you want to put the subject outside the middle, such as for the rule of thirds, 
just export the video with a 2.35 to 1 aspect ratio. When you import the clip into a 16 by 9 video, you can move the subject off center. Now, I love me mode. It's so convenient. I use it all the time. But it's not just about convenience. See, me mode also makes other techniques possible. So what am I talking about? So for example, you can shoot even with damaged lenses on both lenses. Now I've got a tutorial that shows you exactly how to do that. I made that video for the Insta360 X3, but now that you know how to use me mode even with other Insta360 cameras, now you can check out the tutorial too. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in 360.